Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and this is our YouTube video series on how to improve your chess game. Today we're going to talk about how to play black against the London opening. The London is fairly popular these days because white can play it without learning a lot of book, and a lot of people don't have the time or inclination to learn a lot of books, so they play the London, it helps them just get their pieces out without worrying about falling into traps and without worrying that uh, your opponent knows the opening a lot better than you do. So a lot of people kind of uh, check out by playing the London system, and then when people are black, they want to play their Queen's Gambit Decline, they want to play their King's Indian, they want to play their Nimzo Indian, they want to play their Slav, and when people play the London, they get freaked out, they don't know what to do. So one of the common questions I get in my chess lessons is, gee, how do I play against the London system? Okay, so there's two main ways to defend d4, and they end up either being exactly the same against the London or quite different. What do I mean by that? Well, what I'm talking about, of course, is the classical d5 versus the Indian knight f6. If you play the Indian knight f6 and someone plays the London and you decide to play the very reasonable move d5, then it's going to transpose and it's going to be as if you'd played d5 on the first move. However, if you don't like to play d5 positions and you're a, a, an Indian player, you play the Nimzo Indian or the King's Indian or the Grunfeld or something like that, you don't have to ever put your pawn on d5. When you play against the London, for instance, suppose you're a King's Indian player, you can just play it like a King's Indian. You can play g6, knight f3, bishop g7, e3, d6, and then later, after you castle, Let's say white plays uh, h3 so that on knight h5 he can play bishop h2. You can castle, and later on you can play for e5 with a bunch of moves like queen e8, or knight fd7, or knight c6, occasionally even rook e8. These kind of moves will put pressure on the square. You can even move your knight so the bishop hits that square, you know, if you play knight h5 followed by e5, that could be a little dangerous because the knight is a little stuck on the rim and you have to make sure the bishop can continue to guard the e-pawn, but there are some lines where you can do stuff like that. In any case, if you're not ever going to play d5 against the London, it's a whole different ball game, and we're not going to spend too much time talking about that here because you can kind of play like your king's Indian or something like that if you're not going to play d5. So let's concentrate on defenses where black usually plays the queen's gambit declined, or he likes to play the queen's gambit accepted, or he likes to play the Slav defense, and therefore he's going to have the pawn on d5 on the first move, or if you're an Indian player and people play bishop f4, let's say you decide to play d5 right away and transpose in. So let's start talking about this. Um, I'm going to use some help from my buddy here, Stockfish11, because there's some differences in the move orders for what white can do, and those differences in the move order makes a difference for what black can do. For instance, suppose black brings out his bishop really, really early from c8. Suppose we see bishop f4, bishop f5. Well, here white could change his plans and start playing moves like c4. And if black's not paying too much attention, let's say he plays e6, we could get these kind of lines where white plays pawn takes, pawn takes, knight c3, knight f6, and then queen b3, something like that. Although Stockfish tends to think here that if black knows the trick of sacking the b-pawn, he's okay. Knight c6, queen takes, knight takes d4, and black is almost, well, approximately equal. So, let's go back. So a lot of these lines where you play the early bishop f5 are not bad, but you do have to watch out for these queen b3 ideas. That's not the main line, though. The main line is going to be to just develop your king side and get castled. So let's do that. Let's play knight f6, which is Stockfish's number one move, and white usually plays knight f3. Sometimes white plays knight f3 first before he plays bishop f4 into London, and of course that'll transpose into this position as well. And now the top two moves for the computer are e6 and c5. 
And in fact, if you let it think a little longer, it also thinks that playing the symmetric bishop f5 is okay. And as I just said, if you play early bishop f5s and white goes for queen to b3, let's say he plays c4, e6, queen b3, uh, again, Stockfish likes sacking the pawn. Knight, b, knight c6, queen takes b7, knight b4 with a threat to fork, also the threat to trap the queen. For instance, suppose white plays knight a3 here. Uh, black should take the pawn. Check. c6, queen takes c4 with rough equality here after bishop e4. Okay, so back again. These are very rare lines. Let's go back to the main lines. d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3. And here, the break move c5 is very common. You're not worried about losing the pawn. If he takes the pawn, you just play e6 and get the, the pawn back. He can't play b4. You know, if you don't know this, you can go over this with an engine, but if you break up the pawns with a5, he plays c3. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight here, he can't play a3 because of knight takes b4. If he tries to guard the pawn with bishop d2, knight e4. Computer says black's pretty much winning already. So let's go back to the game. Let's go back to the main line. Just want to throw that those things in because sometimes people are worried. If I play c5, he's going to take the pawn and then he's going to hold it. I'm going to be down a pawn. I won't know what to do. Okay, so c5 is a main move. Let's play c5, e3, and now you can just play e6. And very often white plays here either c3 or bishop e2. Let's say he plays bishop e2. He could also play knight 1 on d2. Some people do that. A lot of these lines transpose again. Bishop to e2, getting ready to castle. And here black has to decide whether he wants to play bishop e7, bishop d6, or knight c6, or c takes d4. Those would be the four main moves here. Um, Stockfish has a slight preference for first trading the pawns. White always wants to take back with a pawn so he can hold up the center. If he takes with a knight, then black will have more central pawns. And here, Stockfish likes a move like queen to b6. And again, we have these opposite ideas of hitting the b pawns. Again, white offers the pawn, and black actually shouldn't even take it. Bishop d6 with roughly equality. Okay, let's go back. So c5, perfectly good. You could also play bishop d6. Usually black's, white's supposed to take on, on bishop d6. Let's say he doesn't. Let's say he plays knight to e5. Knight to e5 here is premature. You can play pawn takes, and if pawn takes, play again something like queen b6 hitting the dark squares, and black's a little better. If white retreats the bishop to g3 with the idea of opening up the h file, black can simply trade pawns here. And if he does take, he could take on g3 or he could castle. Either way, let's say he castles, white castles. Once he castles, you're not worried about the open file. You can play bishop takes. He's not going to take with the f pawn to open up the rooks file. He's going to take toward the middle. Taking with the f pawn is a Positional mistake, he would play h takes g3. And again, after something like knight c6 or queen b6, black's equal. We're just going to keep going back and going over lines and lines and lines. So d4, d5, knight f6, sorry, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3. You could play c5 first, you can play e6. Let's say e6, e3. And again, you can play c5 here c5. Let's say white plays c3 this time. Not a big difference. Black can still play bishop d6. If white gives you this check, you can't play bishop in the way to trade off your bad bishop because the queen needs to guard the bishop, so you have to play knight c6. And again, black's pretty equal. Castle, castle. Computer says bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. And knight bd2 with maybe a normal opening advantage here for white, maybe a tenth of a pawn or less. 
Okay, again, ideas, d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3. Now, suppose you don't play c5. c5 is a good move, can't hurt you here. Let's say you play very passively and you play bishop e7. Okay, white should probably start to, to play more like a queen's gambit here if you're going to do that and play c4. Stockfish thinks that white has about a half a pawn advantage, but let's say white doesn't. Let's say white just plays bishop to e2 and black castles. A lot of times here, black's starting to threaten to play knight to h5 to win the bishop pair. So you see often white play a move here like h3 to stop that. If he does, black should still play his break move c5 c3, knight c6, castle. Now, we get to this kind of position a lot, and people say, oh, I don't know what to do here, I don't know what to do. Well, one idea is to play b6, not to guard the pawn here, but of course you'd like to take back with the pawn if he takes, but just to give yourself the option of playing bishop b7, or maybe even bishop a6 in some lines, and then later you can maybe stick the knight on e4. For instance, Knight bd2, bishop b7, let's say white plays rook to c1, and black could just play rook to c8, again with rough equality here. Okay, we just keep throwing out these same ideas, d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3 as usual. It doesn't matter if white plays a slightly different move order, let's say he plays e3, you can still play c5 right away. Again, he can't take. If he takes, you can just laugh and ignore him and play knight here. That also guards the square. Let's say white now plays c3 with the idea of playing b4. Black can play e6, threatening to take the pawn. If white plays here, we have the standard a5 again. What can white do? If he plays b5, then black can just move the knight somewhere, like knight e7. These pawns are not going to be able to be guarded by each other very quickly. And after knight to g6, you're going to be able to hit this pawn. And at some point or another, white's going to lose one of those pawns, and black's going to be better. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back. d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3, e3, sorry, e6, e3. Let's say white plays knight bd2. Computer says play bishop d6. Knight 1d2. You could take the bishop and double the pawns. It's not bad. Stockfish has a slight preference for maybe playing something else first, like c5. If d takes c5, you could take either way. You could take here, and when he takes back, again, you're not too worried about this pawn, but this is probably a little good for white. So it's probably better just to maybe take over here, where white has a slight advantage. Bishop e2, castle, castle. And here already, Stockfish says knight h5 is a move. You can also just play b6 to get your queen side pieces going. So that allows you to fanchetto the bishop. All right, let's go back again. We're just looking at different move orders. d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3. Let's play c5 this time. Let's say he plays c3. Again, we're going to get into very similar positions. Let's say black plays e6. I don't think in this kind of position you want to play bishop f5. Stockfish says, eh, it's okay. White can take the pawn, and if e6, he could try to guard the pawn, and it's a little harder to get it back now. So just e6, e3. And now the question is, where should black put his pieces? 
Bishop d6 is always a good idea. And again, if he plays knight here, you can never play knight bd7. This is one of the few traps in this opening. If you play knight bd7, white to play and win, the answer is knight takes f7, hits the bishop and hits the queen. That's one of the few traps in the, in the London, so don't fall for that. So instead, simply play knight c6. And white's kind of stuck here. Black's threatening to keep taking on e5. Let's say he plays knight d2. Black can in increase the pressure on e5. If knight df3 to guard it, pawn takes. <clears throat> e pawn takes. Hitting it again for the fourth time. Let's say he tries to guard it for the fourth time. Uh, you could start taking it or you could just castle. And now he has to get this bishop out. How's he going to do that? Let's say he plays g3. The computer says now you could reverse course and bring your knight back to f6. But it also says you could just take. Bishop takes. If knight takes. Knight takes. Pawn takes. And Stockfish likes knight e7 with the idea of going to g6, threatening to take the bishop. It says black slightly better. All right, continuing with our series of move orders. Knight f6, this time we played knight f3 first for white. Doesn't matter, we get to this position anyway. E, let's say you're one of those people that doesn't play c5 for a while. E6. Let's say you're also one of those people that don't play bishop d6. You just play bishop e7. This is a fairly passive way to playing it. And white's a little bit better now. In fact, if white decides to play like a queen's gambit with c4, then white's going to get a little bit of an advantage. But let's say white doesn't want to play c4. He's a pure London player. And he plays bishop e2. Black can castle. Let's say white plays h3 to stop knight h5. The computers say at this point, you better realize that c5 is going to be your way of getting activity. Is there any other move that you could play that would give you something? Well, you could delay c5 for one move by playing b6. And after white castles or plays c3, you could delay it again with bishop b7. Let's say he plays knight bd2. And finally, you almost have no choice. Play, play c5 now. You a lot of my students want to play knight bd7 first to guard c5. Well, c5 is already guarded twice. I call that kind of idea over-preparation. And while Nimzovich's idea of over-protection, where you protect something more than necessary, is a good idea, over-preparation is usually a bad idea. So here, knight bd7 is not a bad move. The computer says it's the second best move. But the best move is to just play c5 first, which gives you the option of putting the knight on c6 or the knight on d7. And that's a little bit better. And, you know, this in this position, white has kind of a standard opening advantage of about, you know, one to two tenths of a pawn. Okay, again, d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6 recommended. As I said earlier in the video, I'm not a big fan of bringing the bishop out this early. It's not terrible. You can play bishop f5 right away. We'll do that one more time just for the fun of it. Bishop f5. <clears throat> Let's say he plays knight f3. Knight f6. E3. E6. Let's say he plays bishop d3. What should black do? Should he let him take and get it? the pawns doubled but he has control over the e4 square? Or should he take the bishop? Or should he just develop? And... Stockfish says it's close. Stockfish 11 says bishop d6. If bishop takes f5, e takes f5. If bishop takes d6, you certainly don't want to take with the pawn here and double and isolate your d pawns also. So queen takes d6. And now again, it wants white to play the break move c4. If he castles, black can also just castle. And now c4 is the most logical. And in this position, it's suggesting d takes c4. Queen c2 with a slight advantage to white. He's hitting these two pawns. g6 to hold that pawn. 
He can take queen takes c4, or play knight a3 first, and then take the pawn. And the game is roughly equal. All right, so back to our non-bishop f5 lines. d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3, e3, e6. Let's say you do play c5. A lot of people like to answer c5 with c3. This is a good position to know. You could play knight c6 here, or you could play bishop d6. I have a slight preference for bishop d6 because I want the option of castling. Bishop d6, let's say he takes it. Bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, and let's say he plays bishop d3. You're not gonna wanna play c4 here. That doesn't win a tempo. It costs you one tempo to attack the bishop. It costs the bishop one tempo to save the bishop. That's not winning a tempo. That's not what winning a tempo means. C4 would just take all the pressure off the center. It would be a positional mistake. Stockfish says the best move here for black is to play knight bd7. And after castle, play castle. And if white plays knight on one to d2, black can now play his break, other break move, e5. And a lot of times you see things like pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, knight f3 hitting the queen. Well, okay, but black has a very nice center here now and can just play queen e7 with the idea of developing the bishop either to g4 or maybe e6. Let's say white plays h3 just for the fun of it. What does Stockfish want to do here? Stockfish says you could either play bishop d7 or you could play b6 and black is a little bit better already thanks to the fact that he's, he's got the better center. Okay, so d4, d5, bishop f4, could play knight f3 first, knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3, let's say bishop d6, we're trying different permutations. If he plays bishop takes d6, which way are you going to take back here? Are you going to take back with the queen and not double your pawns, or are you going to take back with the pawn and give yourself an extra pawn in the middle? And the computer says it's very, very close. At uh, 23 ply, Stockfish 11 thinks that C takes D6 is better by about a tenth of a pawn. At 25 ply, it's still a tenth of a pawn better to take with the pawn here. Why is taking with the pawn better when it doubles your pawns? Well, this pawn on D6 stops his knight from coming up to E5. And you have a semi-open c-file, even though you're not going to be able to really do attack down the c-file for your rook. So, and white later, black later can break with e5. And if white takes, of course, black will take back with the pawn and get two center pawns. So black probably wouldn't, white probably wouldn't take, but that means you even have the option later of playing e4, although I wouldn't necessarily do that. Okay, so here white has a normal opening advantage. And in fact, to show you how little... Stockfish thinks of these doubled pawns. It suggests that white plays c4 right away and give black the immediate opportunity to undouble the pawns with uh, d takes c4, which is as good a move as any here. All right, so back to our moves. We're just throwing out all these ideas. If you see these same ideas over and over again, you're not going to go far wrong. Well, okay, we'll play knight f3 first this time. Bishop f4, e6, e3. Uh, we'll go back to those bishop e7 lines. I don't like them as much as the bishop d6 lines we've been looking at, but they're okay. And let's say white this time plays bishop d3. Black's a little more passive with this kind of play. Castle, you're not worried about the bishop hitting the h7 pawn here. There's not much he can do. You know, he's not going to play knight to g5. It doesn't do anything. So the computer says uh, white should castle. And here, knight h5 is not a good idea. If you play knight h5, bishop takes check doesn't work. For instance, bishop takes, king takes, knight checks, bishop takes, queen checks, and black just plays bishop h6 and he's up a piece for nothing. So that's not why knight h5 is not correct. Knight h5 is actually playable. Stockfish says it's okay. And it says white should ignore it with c3 or knight bd2. If he plays bishop g3, 
take it off. He should take toward the middle. And then play your break move c5, and black's a little bit better. Okay, let's do it again. We, we'll do it one more time. We'll pick out some normal order. Bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3. Oh, uh, let's time. Let's do this time. Let's do the bishop d6 line. And let's say he plays bishop takes, queen takes, and bishop to d3, let's say. Castle, castle, c5, c3. And now we have that question again. Where does the knight go? Does it go to c6? Does it go to d7? You could also play b6 first. You got to play b6 probably at some point, although an alternative to playing b6 is to bring out the knight and then play e5. So for instance, you could play knight c6, knight 1b2, and then play e5. And we have, we've seen this position already, or one very, very similar. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, knight f3, and again, queen back to e7. Last time we played a move like h3 here. Um, Let's say white tries something a little more aggressive. Try queen to c2. Stockfish says you can just ignore him and play either b6 or h6. The idea of h6 isn't to stop bishop h7 check. It's so that later on you can do something with the knight without having to worry about losing the pawn. Because if, if white plays a move like this and black decides to move the knight, and moving the knight here is silly. You should finish your development. But if you ever do move the knight here, I'm just going to move it for a second. This check does nothing. You just play king h8, and white's not getting anywhere. So the right move here for black is to just develop either the bishop or the rook, get these three pieces into the game, and you've got your equality. Stockfish 11 actually says black is microscopically better here. Okay, well, hopefully you got the idea. If, you're, if you don't play d5 for black, you don't have to worry about most of the things we talked about in the video. You can go ahead and play your King's Indian or, you know, play these lines where you don't play d5. So most of the video was where you're either going to play d5 on the first move, like as if you're going to play a Slav or a Queen's Gambit, or if you're an Indian player and you decide to play d5, let's say, on the second move, then you're going to get into the kind of positions that we looked at here. And, you know, does white retain a slight advantage if he plays right? Well, of course, that's what's going to happen, but it's not going to be a big advantage. We, we saw that there's like all of one big trap in the, the London, so you're probably not going to get into too much trouble if you just follow the ideas in the video. And of course, if you're white and you play the London, the ideas in the video should also help you quite a bit too, because you saw that white was it, playing these regular moves was maintaining his very small advantage. And that's all you ever want for white is to maintain your small advantage. And that's all you ever want for black is to keep white's advantage to being a small advantage. If you can get equality, so much the better. Okay, hopefully this, this video was helpful. We will see you next time. If you enjoyed the video, please hit a like button. And if you like the channel, Dan Heisman Chess, you can hit subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.